Welcome to the Infinite Life Podcast. I'm your host, Katish Haverfield. This podcast is a journey of discovery as we learn how the soul evolves over various incarnations to understand all about the complexities of being a human being who has to bravely navigate viewing life as a non-dualistic struggle between good and evil through consciousness raising experiences that test our valour. Hello again, you wonderful podcast listeners and YouTube viewers. I am thrilled to be back with you today. I'm Jennifer Moore from EmpathicMastery.com, and this is my Welcome to the Infinite Life podcast with Katish Haberfield. I'm a fairy godmother for empaths, an author, a master trainer for EFT International, and host of the Empathic Mastery Show podcast, which will be featuring a potent conversation with Katish in the later spring of 2024. It's a pleasure to return to the second session with Katish on her Healer's Path journey. Our first session was remarkable, and this one keeps going down the rabbit hole. In this second session, Katish and I explore many different twists and turns of my soul's journey. In this episode, you'll get to witness more exploration of past life connections, personal and professional developments, plus the inevitable addressing of deeper spiritual and emotional issues, unpacking soul agreements, and Katisha's expert support with helping some stuck spirits to cross over and the integration of past life experiences into my current consciousness for my growth and healing. I'll leave the rest to you to discover in the episode. So I just really want to thank you for listening. I'm Jennifer Moore, your grateful guest on the Infinite Life Podcast with Katish Haberfield. Now, as I count backwards from five down to zero, you can go deeper into this relaxation with every number. With five, feeling the weight of the head over your forehead. The weight of the eyelids sealed pleasantly tight shut. With three, a heavy, comfortable energy flowing with every breath. Aware of the air on your skin, flowing into the feeling within your one heart beating, sending loving energy through your body with zero all the way down to the soles of your feet. As you're breathing out any old energy as a dark color, as you breathe in, imagine you can breathe in a cleansing new color. Now, what I want you to do is notice how the white light of your higher self is completely relaxed every part of your body now. Just relax into the white light, knowing that your higher self has got you for this session. You are cradled in the arms of your higher self. And I want you to imagine a staircase that goes up, like a stairway into blue sky or white spacious radiance. As I count up from 1 to 20, you can ascend higher and higher into a place you can create and discover, like a temple, a garden, or a pure, wise energy. With one, notice the staircase's color and texture. Maybe white like clouds that move you effortlessly higher with every step. Two, three, getting higher. Four, five. And higher, six, awareness expanding, seven, eight, as you promote, approach a dimension of your superconscious mind, nine, ten, up to a place where we can request your spirit guides to help you, eleven, twelve, where we can meet members of your soul group, thirteen, fourteen, and the soul council, fifteen, sixteen, who can assist with the current issues, 17, 18, and the journey through many lives as a soul, with 19, 20, 
step now into a pure spiritual dimension. Here the deepest levels of your mind can open up and you can remember everything. I want you to find a place where you can rest, surrounded and filled with light. And I want you to know that the spiritual dimension can have elements of form and formlessness that arise and dissolve into each other. So let's start imagining a pure white room with a white chair and a movie screen showing a pristine garden and temple. This is a place you can connect with nature and your true nature. Here you are safe with a protective layer of light around you so that you can take with you as you step through the screen into the scene. Imagine stepping through and entering a garden with a temple. Notice the garden's plants like red roses and yellow sunflowers. Notice short trees with fruits like oranges. Notice the green grass and leaves. Look up to see a clear blue sky and tall trees with high violet flowers. Tall trees can sway in the breeze and stay secure because of their deep roots. Here you can connect with a higher spiritual part of your being, knowing part of you is always securely grounded. So I want you to make your way through the garden to a healing temple where you can sit or recline comfortably. And then I want you to notice or create a crystal above you. Let this be a channel to send focus energy into your body. Imagine a blue color flowing to your throat and a purple color flowing to your forehead and third eye. Imagine you can float up and see your body reclining from the temple ceiling. Notice the physical form of the body, the energy form and the color. Ask for or send whatever cleansing, healing or strengthening energy you need to go beyond one body and into your soul's journey. And now we're going to invite your higher self and your spirit guides to be with you for this session. You can do that now by sending the invitation and saying inside your mind, I ask for my spirit guides to come and assist me now. Now these may not be the ones that you expect. So let me know when you see, hear, feel or sense some energy. They might be on your right, they might be on your left. I can see, I can sense energy. There's some in front of me. Mm -hmm. There is some behind me to, like on either shoulder, on either side, to, but just like to diagonally to either side of my shoulders. Okay. All right. And so is there an energy form? That is the brightest or my more vibrant at the moment. That is really imagine the they had a loud speaker. In front of me. Mm -hmm. In front is okay. violet. It seems from what I know of the energetic signature like Saint Germain. Okay. Now, could you ask this violet being to come forward? Because there's two people that have this kind of a color. There's Saint Germain and then there's an archangel, Zadkael. So let us find out if you could ask them. Which one it is today? It's interesting. Their answer is right now. It doesn't matter. Right now, it doesn't <laughs> matter. Are. Okay. It doesn't matter. We are who we are. And they were just showing me like the magnitude of this violet energy it's almost like saint germain would be the uh, an octave mm -hmm. of the that's angel correct. Yep. yeah that's correct yep perfect okay so i just wanted to know if they wanted to yeah they, we got the yeah, message there, like, so. yeah, yeah one in the same one in the same okay beautiful so thank you um for coming today uh are you going to take us to a moment in time that is important? They said we can. <laughs> They're like, we can. Sorry. But you don't want to? <laughs> no, they were just like, if that's what you want to do, we can. Okay. Well, sorry, Zach Kale's got is quite sarcastic. We have a great banter. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, my love, I'll be bossy then. So, Kale, you have got two choices. Either take her to the soul council straight away or take her to a moment in time, this life or a previous life that is going to get to the crux, the root cause of an issue that we spoke about in the prelude to today's session. Okay. I'm I, Jennifer, am being given a choice. Mm Mm-hmm. Because either one will work just as well. And my instinct is to go to the soul council. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So Jennifer, just need to follow the energy towards the soul council. Mm -hmm. So you'll go be taken to a room. I am in there. You're in the room. Okay, you're a fast traveler. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I want you to count the number of energetic beings in the room. Okay. There are nine beings in front of me in a circle because the room is a circle. The room Mm -hmm. is probably three stories tall and it has these huge arched windows. The room is just very light. But then there are other beings um, behind me. Mm -hmm. It's somewhere between 15 and 18. Okay. So I just want you to look at the nine beings. Mm-hmm. And there's going to be one being who looks like they're in charge of today's session. Yes. Okay. And how do they represent themselves to you? What is their form? They are larger and further forward into the center and sitting on a throne kind of platform, like a dais. Mm-hmm. Um, and they energetically, they look like they're, you could imagine them to be a like a judge on a council they look ironically cute from star trek next generation Mm -hmm. but they also they're like a pyramid their energy is like a vortex a cone of energy okay that's so they can assume a human form but they are pure they are more energy and there's a lot of pale like very bright electric blue and white light swirling around them okay And is it important or is it immaterial that we have some kind of a name for the sake of this session to refer to them? I'm waiting for an answer. No, you're right. It's funny. It's on one level, it's completely immaterial. On another level, having a name to attach to is helpful. The closest I can land with a word, Mm -hmm. because the language is not human, is just meant to be a form of reverence. It's it's like Sienna. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. And they never get offended. It's just meant to be for your mind to grasp onto and for you mm-hmm. to know that you're addressing them as a in a nice form of reference. It's just for the human mind, really. Okay, let us address some questions to Sienna and the council. And the most important thing that I want to ask them to help you through to begin with is I want to go to the time before you incarnated in your current lifetime. Okay. So I want them to take you to that moment, please. And I want you to relive your present body selection. So I want you to recall the discussion preceding your birth in the present lifetime. And what I want you to focus on, sorry, there's a few instructions before you'll be able to get the whole scene, is the intention in choosing your present body life and circumstances. And if you were given some options of some births to take. I was given options of a birth to take. Mm -hmm. And what were they? The one that I've known of for a while, and there was so much showing me again, is I could have been, I could have incarnated as a man, a young man in Japan, but I would, I would have had, I probably would have had a Shinto practice. Mm -hmm. I would have ended up just being, going into engineering Mm -hmm. and 
my life, I also would have been a, an alcoholic okay. and I would not have been able to, I would have enjoyed, I would have enjoyed creativity. I would have enjoyed expression, but in some ways, like I would have had a spiritual practice embedded but it wouldn't have been something I would fight for because okay. it was not, it, it was never, I was never deprived of it. Okay. So it was a uh, implicit rather than explicit. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, and another one that I'm just seeing now for the first time was being a little, I can see I was a little boy in the UK in the English countryside, I'm hearing Surrey. And I would have been like the second, the middle child. And I would have been the apple of my mother's eye. However, I also would have gotten sick and died fairly young by the time I was seven. And so it was a life where I just would not have, I, while I would have gotten a great deal of love and delight, I would not have, I would not have, it would not have been a life that would have, like, it would never have come to fruition. Like, it would not have borne, borne much fruit for my soul's purpose. Okay. And so then the third option is your current lifetime as Jennifer. Is that right? I'm just checking to see if there's any others. others? Um, yeah, sure. There was another life where I would have been a, I would have incarnated, I would have been born a couple years later than I was. I would have been female. I would have been born into a conservative family in Texas. I would have been a cheerleader. I would have followed all of the rules. And again, I would have, my faith would have been implicit it would have been just part of it it would have been an evangelical and i would have married my high school sweetheart like the captain of the football team mm -hmm. we would have been very prosperous it would have been a wholly adequate life but again i would not have had an opportunity i would never have had an opportunity to be creative i would never have had an opportunity to express myself I would never, I just, I would not have been able to do so many of the things that I've been allowed to do in this lifetime. Okay. So thank you for the, for letting us know those. So you chose the current lifetime basically over options where there was more focus on love, love and life. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And, and, and yeah. And in some ways more focused on ease, like none of the other lives None of the other lives made my spirituality a priority mm -hmm. because it was just like the oxygen that I was breathing. The English life, I was too young. I didn't really have any spiritual practice. Like I was just like, I was raised Episcopalian, but it wasn't in that life, but it wasn't a big deal. Like it was just, yeah. it was what it was. But, but in, in a weird way, this life because of the lack of the spiritual connection in externally, I had to claim it at a whole other level internally. Okay. The next part of the questions is why did you choose the particular parents that you chose for this lifetime? For a number of reasons. With my mother, we have a past life karma, past life connections to the convents of Europe mm -hmm. and just the sweetness of that. Mm -hmm. With my father, he, he, he had a lot of learning to do about the nature beyond the physical. And I was to be a teacher for him. Also, my parents provided resources. It was, I was, and because they were both, because they were both, they were both committed to showing up and being rule break, like breaking pattern breakers mm -hmm. and like to be, so they allowed me, they, and they also, there was a deep 
willingness on their part to give me love, physical care to get me to where I am. And, but also there was very little restriction Mm -hmm. to my creativity. Like Mm -hmm. they, they allowed me from the time I was an infant to be the creative soul that I am. There was never, I know so many creative people who had parents who stopped them in their tracks from being able to be creative. That was never stopped for me. So I got a lot of, they were a good choice. Okay, perfect. All right. And in this preview for this current lifetime with these current parents, were you given options or were there other soul group members, either immediate close soul group members or extended soul family members that you agreed to meet? There were soul family members that I would meet later in life who were not part of my biological family. Mm -hmm. And I started encountering a number, like I started encountering soulmates around the ages of 16, 17, 18 years old. As I mentioned, my mom and I have a history of the convents and other lives. I've not necessarily, I had, I've had some encounter with my sister in a previous life, in a life as a slave in Roman times. All right. So I just want you to hold for a second. Yeah. I I don't want you to think about this. Okay. I don't want you to think about this as you. I want you to look at as though you are previewing your lifetime. Mm-hmm. There is this discussion being made and there are other people sitting with you determining key moments where you will meet them. Mm-hmm. Who are these people? You may not know them yet, but who are they and when do you agree to meet them? For what purpose? So the first one is my friend, I'll just use initials my friend yeah, that's R mm-hmm. yeah my friend R and we met when I was 16 mm-hmm. we really solidified our relationship at 23 we are still friends to this day mm-hmm. um, and you, you agreed to meet her at 16 okay who we else agreed you- to meet each other and then my friend M who I met we met mm, I don't know we met Sorry. maybe yeah I want you to preview it from before meeting. Don't switch okay. back into you. You've got to go back into that time. Okay. You're disembodied. I want you we to see the that, So we agreed to meet when she was in her 30s and I was in my late 40s. Okay. Is there anyone else at, sitting around this table that you agreed to meet that you may or may not have met yet? Interestingly, my husband Mm -hmm. agreed to meet him. Also, my dog, who is Mm -hmm. here right now. Mm -hmm. And I sense that there is another person who I will meet when I'm 75 years old. Okay, great. Person 75. Perfect. Now, I want to ask you. Remembering, I want you to look from the perspective of you haven't even incarnated into this life yet. Mm-hmm. This is the meeting mm-hmm. before. I want you to, to show yourself a couple of situations. So let's just do two for a start. Two key turning points in your life where things could go totally different ways. I'm not saying that they're going to be negative or positive. They're just, let's look at it from a neutral perspective. Totally what did your, yes. Yeah. What does your soul choose that are, these are going to be two key turning moments for you the first very significant key moment was the car accident on holy thursday when i was 18 years old okay i could have easily have slipped out and left like that could have been it i could have not survived so that wasn't that was an exit point potentially that was an exit point yes yep okay any other key moments that they're showing you um they're showing me when it was the year where a lot of people died 
or it would be a year when a lot of people will die. And I, I got sick with Lyme disease and, and, and Lyme induced pneumonia. That was another moment where it was like, Mm -hmm. it, it just, it was another very seminal, very significant point, turning point. Okay. All right. And what I want to know um, is there are a few possible outcomes for this life and none of them are bad. There's, they're just multiple options. It's like you have already predetermined in this planning session that mm-hmm. there are a number of things that your soul will let you with your human personality and your human free will have the choice as being outcomes of this lifetime what are some of the options that they are showing you that you agreed were potential outcomes for your soul with this body choice i'm looking Mm -hmm. so one is that that the rest of this life can be easy just Mm -hmm. one of coasting Mm -hmm. and not a lot of strain but and just just being Mm -hmm. like not necessarily making a whole lot more impact Mm -hmm. but just being allowed to just be comfortable Mm. so reaching the point that you've read reached now with the work and the book and everything like that and then yeah enjoying it and just enjoying it just being like you know what you've done enough it's okay you can relax you can rest you can just let it be and everything else is gravy Mm -hmm. what else is another potential outcome that you predetermined could be your choice It's interesting. This one feels a little bit harder to see, but this is where the traction of the work that I've been doing, the sort of the doubt that was spoken about before we went to the council, that duality gets lifted off. And subsequently, the work goes from strain to effortlessness and the work does reach like the work does reach that I have like a library of books I have written. Mm -hmm. I have years of podcasts, hundreds, if not thousands of students. Mm -hmm. And I live beyond the age that I could live to, I lived to be about 92, 93 years old. Okay. All right. And I feel that there is one more in the middle. Yes, there or, is. Yeah. Yeah. And that one I think is probably the hardest one in the sense that's one where my body really, my body just, for lack of a better description, and this is not, I'm not saying this from judgment, but my body kind of succumbs to the fear and the dread and the terror. Mm -hmm. And I, and it just, and I leave Mm -hmm. probably sooner than the other two, way sooner than the other two. Okay. Now I just want to check quite clearly there's one there that is more preferable to you either the first or the second okay. i would prefer not to perish from fear mm-hmm. yeah okay i just wanted to check then the second one where you do lots of books lots of podcasts and have lots of of students was there a fourth option which was just in the similar vein of what you would deem as jennifer as a successful spiritual career that's not writing teaching focused or is that just the soul's path for this lifetime is the writing teaching i just want to check that there wasn't another way that this body this selection of family
I, there's an option that I'm being presented with, which is okay. that I could return to the visual art. Okay. Yeah, that that I could off. return to the visual art and that the way that the information comes through would be through like making art. Yeah, so the art is spiritual art and that the art disseminates the healing and the information. Is that what you mean? Yes, yes. The art is the teaching. The okay. art is the method. The writing would probably end up coming through anyway because it's almost like the writing would end up coming through, but it wouldn't necessarily be just the primary vessel. And interestingly, I think that not only would the art be in the form of painting, the art would also be in the form of glass work, like mm. glass blowing mm -hmm. and working with glass. Okay. And now I want to ask you a couple of questions. Between okay. the easy, the what I would call the traditional successful so-called spiritual podcast or author teacher and the visual art, if you could line those three and pretend they were people or shapes or objects in a row or pretend they were trophies or something, does one shine brighter, look more vivid or clearer or have a better feeling than the other? Because all three are wonderful opportunities. There's no judgment here. They're all valid for your soul. They're being presented as options. What we're looking for is a instinctive feeling about a preference that you may have between those three options. I'm just looking. No, take your time. I. It's interesting. I really want a fusion of those three. I want the effortlessness and the z sort of, can I use zero Fs given that the first life has mm -hmm. the capacity to create in this unbridled, really prolific way. Why, that does isn't... Your, why do you assume that number two is going to be difficult. Oh. There is some kind of residue. Mm -hmm. It's the marketing, over. isn't it? It's probably, it's the whole thing of there's a there's an energy of strain mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's just the marketing it's this my brain I have this brain thing where it's like on off switch some days energy and creativity and work flows effortlessly and it is just sheer delight mm -hmm. and then other days it is like pulling teeth and like dragging. It's like driving in third gear, like driving on the highway in third gear. Okay. So thank you for those impressions. So what we're going to look at now is because there's a real risk, to be honest with you, that if we don't get to this residue, that you're actually going to end up in number three, right? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Because I will check, I, because if this is, if life number two is as much of a strain as part of me can sense it could be, I can feel like, I, sadly, it probably would end up as brain tumors. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Your soul sees a risk in number two, quite clearly. Mm -hmm. Do you feel any of that residue with... And look, I am not trying to make you make any choice here right now mm -mm, or mm -mm. casting a judgment. I'm just trying to check the energy. With the visual art option, how does that feel? Does that contain that residue as well? It doesn't seem to. Okay. Okay. And I just want to check the easy coasting. You've already done it. You don't need to have any more effort. You can just relax and enjoy. That's got a residue. What's that residue? Guilt. Guilt. Okay. 
Explain. I'm not using my potential. I am not using my resources. I am not doing what I am here to do to help and support the ascension of this planet. And I am, for lack of a better word, I am squandering mm-hmm. my I am squandering my resources in terms of I am holding on to them just for myself when I have plenty of resources to do the work that I'm here to do. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to um, call uh, Sienna back in and I just Mm -hmm. want to uh, do one thing first. I want to get her take on the fact that your soul seems to be horrified by the notion of a resting incarnation so a resting incarnation has no judgment based upon it it's just simply an incarnation where you do take an easy option where you replenish your soul you receive love light healing and the whole purpose is self-love and love from others so that you can then tackle harder incarnations why does your soul resist this There is residue of lives in and lives in the Catholic Church, in the clergy, um, as in the convents as a nun, and also in the um, working, but working more not necessarily as a parish person, but more in the organization and the. So there's there's some residue from multiple lives. And a bit of, I think, some puritanical stuff. There's also was a life where I was developmentally or cognitively disabled. Mm-hmm. And where it was a resting life, it was a joyful life, it was a life where I was receiving a lot of love. Mm-hmm. But I also was in my intellectual capacity was really inhibited. Mm-hmm. So there's this false perception that a life of rest is a life of diminishment okay so i'm just i i want to clear this because it's going to impact upon your ability to fulfill what you actually want to fulfill if we've got this residue so i'd like yeah. to call back in so sienna does sienna have anything else to say about this before we go because i believe that we're going to go off and investigate this is, does the soul council have anything else that they wish to impart knowledge wise or wisdom wise before we go and address a few of the outcomes of what we've discovered i'm just listening and waiting they're saying or she's saying it doesn't matter which Mm -hmm. road you choose or which path you choose, they will all lead back to this. Mm -hmm. Each one has their own flavor. Each one is more, it it, is like they're all equal. However, there is probably one that you will personally prefer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We give you permission to choose the one you prefer. Okay. My only objective is to ensure that you don't end your life with guilt that stops you from crossing over or is residually passed on to others from this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, negative energy. Let's ask the purple-violet energy to come back in. Um, And beautiful. I want them just to hold space for you now as you examine... What is holding you back? And either we take you to a moment in this lifetime or a previous site where we want to see if this residue of an easy life is being held in the body somewhere because we know that you can find residue very easily in your body and that will catapult you into the right moment. So we ask them to help you cast the violet light over the body to see where there are residues of fear, residues of disliking rest, either one of those two hanging out in your body at the moment. 
there it's it what i'm noticing or seeing is there's residue and energy all through my from my waist to my buttocks to my 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 hip bones my sits bones my root chakra so the whole kind of belly lower torso area and then there's also some residue in my feet okay. like calcification and crystallization in my feet which one is a brighter color right now they're different the ones in my feet are like there's this almost like very bright black and it's and there's white light there's pockets of black with white light around them mm -hmm. and then the belly is much larger it's much murkier it's swirling there's like rust color there's brown there's red there's orange there's these pockets of sort of murky stagnant greeny swampy algae black so the belly is substantially more like there's a lot more going on in the belly but in terms of vibrancy like there's a more there's like almost like a sharper like the transparency in the belly is maybe like a maybe like a, an 80 like somewhere around like an 83 to maybe 87 percent Whereas the feet are more like a 95% transparency mm -hmm. or opacity. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go to the feet because that was my first instinct. Mm -hmm. Because in order to achieve what you want to have achieve, you need your feet to carry you, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, you may need a whole session for the abdomen. So let's examine the feet. Mm-hmm. So I want you to feel for emotions, words, or thoughts that are associated with the feet. If the feet could talk, what would they say? Hmm. Um, so I'm immediately hearing, stop taking me for granted. Mm-hmm. And be grateful. Be grateful for the ways that I carry you. Mm -hmm. I'm just listening. The next message that I'm hearing is there's something I need more nourishment, that I need more pure rest, not half rest, where like part of me is like mm, the switches that we did earlier. It's like my energy system has been flickering between on and off. And when I'm supposedly resting, often the switches, it's like the switch is not fully turned off. And so there's still a little bit of current coming through all the time. Uh -huh. And my feet are like, you have to turn off entirely. You must completely, like you've got to shut the computer down entirely. Uh -huh. And you need it need because you need to recharge, you need to reboot, you need more juice. Mm -hmm. Do you get outside much with barefoot? When it is not like it is here <laughs> right <laughs> now. Yes, I spend a good amount of time outside, sometimes barefoot, sometimes not. But right now we are in like it's it's 26 degrees Fahrenheit right now or less. It's probably about 19 degrees Fahrenheit right now, which is probably like it's well below zero Celsius right now. And it and we have a good amount of snow and ice on the ground. So it is not conducive to walking outside barefoot at this point in time. Okay. We, we, the weather is better, I do. Wim Hof, Wim Hof would disagree with you. 
I understand Wim Hof. So what do your feet, what do do your feet advise as a way that you need to discharge the energy and the electricity through your feet during the winter months? How specifically do they wish to be? Um, Even if I was barefoot more frequently or in socked feet more frequently than wearing shoes with soles on them, I mm-hmm. could discharge more that okay. the That's space we are. Yeah. The space that we are in is close enough to the earth and is made of natural enough material that it is not hard to discharge mm-hmm. my feet. Even if I have become very accustomed to wearing shoes a lot of the time. Okay. And if I was not wearing shoes in the house, that's enough. Okay. Perfect. Especially mindfully discharging. Great. Okay. That's an easy solution then, isn't it? Because remember, mm-hmm. we're for ways to avert the potential that you could become ill. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, looking at these feet, is there any energy in your feet that does not belong to you? Yeah. My... My mother had extremely narrow feet. And so shoe shopping was very hard for her as a child. I had the opposite problem. My feet were the antidote to my mother's feet. And as a small child, I had super wide feet, which Mm -hmm. made getting shoes very hard for me as well. And my feet, as I became an adult, just normalized. And I have just normal width feet now. But as a child, Um, And so I'm just seeing that this tension around uh, compensating for my mother's feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're ready to release that now? Yes. Okay. So exhale and release. Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah. If you feel you need to kick your shoes off, please do so. Yeah, I, I, my shoes are off. I just had to move my feet and put them. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh. Mm. Ooh, that was a lot of energy. I really felt that up in my in the back of my skull as well. Okay, yeah, that's all mm. connected. All right, now I'm interested in the words stop taking me for granted because they sound like humanistic words to me. Can you examine they do, those? Don't they? Mm. They're slippery. It's very, it's amorphous. Slippery, amorphous energy belong to a being. I'm looking, I can see something about my father's mother, the Mm -hmm. one I mentioned earlier. But I doesn't, she, she had a, like she had an orthotic in one, she had a unbalanced hips. So she had Mm -hmm. a wedge in one shoe. Mm -hmm. and she often she wore Chinese slippers a lot Mm -hmm. of the time because they were comfortable for her Mm -hmm. I don't understand why her feet and her story is tied to stop taking me for granted I think she's here Uh can you there is an energetic being above again same position as last session on the same side of the room as the monkey. By the monkey, yeah. Yeah, but above your shoulder. Is that her? I'm being told, no, it's not her, that it is my great-grandmother on my mother's side, Elizabeth. Okay, Elizabeth. Okay, hello, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, my name is Katish. It's lovely to meet you. What do you have to tell us today, Elizabeth?
She's surprised <laughs> that sure anybody's is. listening to her, but also she's, oh, like I, I, she's, it, it does not, it, it's like she's almost been summoned as opposed to she's just been stuck here. Mm-hmm. She's saying that she realized that the only thing that really mattered is love. Mm -hmm. She's been watching from the other side mm -hmm. and keeping an eye on me. Mm -hmm. she's also giving me a message about current family situation where she's just it's going to work itself out don't worry about it avoid okay. just don't engage mm -hmm. can you ask her the connection to the feet and why there's her residual energy in your feet She, she was really aware of my mother's challenges with shoes and feet herself mm -hmm. and tried to accommodate my mother's needs. But my mother's feet were so narrow, it was hard. There's something about just like, proper footwear or shoes that fit mm -hmm. felt like a form of prosperity and abundance. Oh. And the fact that my mom just couldn't quite get shoes that ever fit right mm -hmm. was this nagging low level of scarcity. Okay, so does that mean that when Jennifer doesn't wear shoes, she feels like she's a dirty beggar? Ooh. When Jennifer doesn't wear, that, that it's not that not wearing shoes is being a dirty beggar, is that not wearing shoes is being deprived of the prosperity of shoes equals resources. Okay. Having shoes that fit... <laughs> Having shoes that fit means that you have the money to buy the shoes that fit. And okay. so it's more of if you're not wearing shoes, the interpretation is you must not have a pair of shoes that fit you. Okay. All right, Elizabeth, <laughs> sweetheart, we totally understand that from your time. We understand completely. But we have just been told that um, Jennifer needs to go barefoot otherwise she's going to encounter health conditions do you agree to remove that residual energy from her right now she's really she's showing me a pair of white knee socks like she's okay but it's there's got to be protection there's got to be protection. There's got to be like, I don't know whether there was like, anyway, so I'm ne we're negotiating here. All right. Hey, like, Jennifer, yeah. I'm, I'm really doubting that she's crossed over. Okay. She's being too possessive. Yep. She came back. So when my mom gave birth to me and she started to hemorrhage out, she came and was there when my mother was giving birth to me. And she's been watching me ever since. On which side? In terms of the physical. Did she? From. Had, from I think she, you're right. No, yeah, I, I, think you're, I think you're right. I don't think. I think she's done a very good job of kind of like tending, 
pretending <laughs> or or acting as it but I think you're right I think she did I think she has and Lee she lived so and here's the thing Lee lived with her ah there's a connection and Shirley oh, yeah. and Shirley Lee and Elizabeth all lived together after Shirley's father John died mm-hmm So do we have Shirley as well? Do we have Shirley with her as well? Shirley's alive, but not. Shirley's around? Shirley's, Shirley is physically alive. However, she has pretty severe dementia. Okay. And it's looking like she's, it's getting close to her time. Okay. All right. So if Elizabeth. you're sensing her in and out, yeah. that's what, <laughs> why you're sensing her in and All out. Right. Elizabeth, my darling, we love you very much. We understand your maternal responsibility to look after those who come in your heritage. However, my dear, the bigger responsibility that you have is to ensure that you do not imprint on your heritage. And by not crossing to the light, you are draining their energy rather than providing resources for them. Okay, it's vital to your soul that you cross over because your soul requires you back. You have other tasks to do. Your soul needs to grief from your death and your children through all incarnations need to remove that grief from their soul as well. So being in the feet of Jennifer is actually draining her energy because what's happening is that you are taking the electricity and the energy, the life force energy out of Jennifer's feet, which should be going into the earth and using it to fuel your incarnation that, that was supposed to be finished. So you are robbing Mother Gaia of the earth energy that Mother Gaia needs and you are keeping the energy for yourself. Now, I know this sounds very harsh and I don't normally talk, talk harshly, but I wish to be very clear and frank with you and to be honest with you so you can see the implications. We wish you well, but we wish for you to return to the light right now. You can be a spiritual guide to Jennifer from the light where you will be healed and you will have the higher wisdom perspective to help her. <coughs> mm, something's moving. Mm. <sighs> mm. It was never her intention. No. She just believed that by sticking around and keeping an eye on my mother and then subsequently me i was literally named after her it's my middle name mm -hmm. that she has been aiding and supporting and helping yeah. but she can see what it has done is it's acted almost as a rubber soul between me and the earth mm -hmm. yeah. like she has acted as insulation mm -hmm. between me and the conduit that supports me yeah yeah, and we can understand that it wasn't your intention and these things happen. Mm -hmm. But can we bring in an angel to help you transition now, my dear? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm pretty sure our favorite purple angel is just hanging by. So look for the purple tinted light. That is a very handsome angel. Ready to take you by the hand and take you to the light. Is she resisting? Or is she I think she's gone. Oh. 
I got an energetic confirmation that she's gone, but I feel like there's maybe somebody else has come forward now. What that is that's... very. There's this I more wonder... energy. I actually, I wonder if there's this definite energy around your face now. It's right in front of your face. I'm. I am wondering either if it is my mother's energy because my mother is. She's between, she's here and she's not here. Yeah. She's doing that. She's wavering between here and not here. Mm -hmm. She's not physically so infirm. It's not like she's like sick in bed right now necessarily. But so I don't know if it is her energy that's in and out. Or the other person that comes to my mind is her sister, Pat. Okay, so let's inquire. Is it Pat? I heard no. No. Is it? I want to ask. Another you, name is Charlotte. Charlotte, is Charlotte a past life version of you? No, Charlotte is actually at least the Charlotte that I was thinking. The Charlotte that I heard is was is an aunt by marriage. So let's inquire first, because I'm very interested that this energy keeps superimposing over your face, which is why I was thinking that there might be mm -hmm. a past life persona that's attached to you, mm -hmm. you of another time that hasn't crossed. So let's mm -hmm. just check. Your aunt by married Charlotte, does she no. respond? Nope. All right. Okay, dear being, dear one of who is imposing themselves over the top of Jennifer's face right now, what is your name? Teresa. Teresa, my darling. Tell me a little bit about you. My life has been devoted and dedicated to the convent. Mm -hmm. In which time do you live? Hmm. 1850s to 1880, mid-80s. Okay, my dear. And is this in the UK, Teresa? No, France. France, okay. And Teresa, what is your connection to Jennifer? How did you meet Jennifer? You are right. This is a previous incarnation of her right. soul. Okay, my darling. And the reason why I could recognize it is, it is I've had exactly the same experience. So my heart goes out to both of you. I understand at a soul level. I completely understand, my dear. Teresa, could you take us back into your life for a few bro brief moments because it is also Jennifer's life and we would like to witness your story because obviously I feel like crying. So there's something here that is really important that nobody has ever seen that you really need to tell somebody today. And we're here to be your friends and to hear your story, my darling. It's very important to us and it's very important to your soul. Jennifer, are you, are you in agreement that you should take us mm -hmm. back? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the two of you literally can just step back into a really important scene in Teresa's life so we can let her be the storyteller. There's something very emotional that needs to come out here. Ooh. Yeah, no, her brother, my brother, died of tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. I was nine. Mm -hmm. He was about 18 or 20. I mm -hmm. come from a very large family. He was my favorite. Mm -hmm. And I was just bereft when he left. Mm -hmm. And I had prayed so hard mm -hmm. for him to not die. Mm -hmm. I prayed so hard. I did novena after novena. I prayed. I went without meals. I, I sacrificed as much as I could. And he still died. Okay. And my darling, I 
I was supposed to marry and have children and have a just easy life. Mm -hmm. But I felt so sad, but also so guilty that I couldn't save him, mm -hmm. that I entered the convent at the age of 14 and a half, 15 years old mm -hmm. uh, as a way to do penance oh. for his death. Okay. So a couple of questions, my darling. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring in your higher self, which is obviously the same as Jennifer's higher self. And we want to get some wisdom and insight that your higher self would like to tell you about your brother's death. What does your higher self need to let you know about your brother's death? It was not my fault. There was nothing I could have possibly done to change the circumstances. Mm -hmm. No amount of prayer, fasting or sacrifice would have kept, would have changed the outcome. Okay. And my brother did not want the outcome that I gave myself for mm -hmm. me. He wanted me to be happy. He would have been able to reincarnate as one of my children, as a son of mine, if oh. I had not been grieving so deeply that I basically just shut my own life down. Okay. And did he cross to the light or did your guilt keep him down? Good question. I just saw his face. Yeah, I. <sighs> he was expecting to reincarnate through me. So it was this thing where, yeah, he just never, he ended up getting stuck here. Okay. What's his name? Jean. Jean. Okay. I'm just going to. Keep you in this lifetime, and we're just going to go to Jean's deathbed, okay? So everybody's going to move to Jean's deathbed. Okay, and Jean, oh, my it darling. It smells so icky. Yeah. I'm nine. Mm -hmm. It smells so gross. Okay. Now, Jean, I'm talking to you right now, my darling. Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre. Hello, Jean. My name is Katish. Now, in a few moments, you're going to die. And what I want you to do is look for the angel. It's really important that as you cross to the light, you look for the angel and turn around and blow your sister a kiss so that she knows that you are safe and so that kiss can energetically impart a great wash of peace. Because what I want you to do is we need you to cross over to the light now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me know when you see the angel. Okay. Way. All right. So God bless, God speed, and it's time to go to the light now, darling. I think he's crossed. Yep, I got confirmation that he's crossed. All right, Teresa. Now, darling, I want you to show me what is else is important in this lifetime that we need to witness. What happens in the convent? That's I don't feel sad now, but I think there's something else that's pivotal that we need to see. Um. There was a diverting of funds. Mm -hmm. There was corruption within our, our diocese. Mm -hmm. And I was very disenchanted mm -hmm. because I came to 
the convent with a with guilt mm -hmm. but also with a childlike innocence mm -hmm. and love and devotion and i witnessed misappropriation of funds unfairness things like the mother superior and her small posse of or cohort of not of sisters getting all of the choice cuts all of the best mm -hmm. while we were many of us were subsisting on porridge mm -hmm. that really um soured my sense of religion mm -hmm. Okay. And is there anything else that we need to witness that you need to tell us about the story of your life? The best part of that life after I was in the convent was being in the gardens. Mm hmm and having my hands in the earth and my feet in the earth and being able to sneak my sandals off and walk barefoot. Mm -hmm. So and, connected. Yep. Yeah. And also, I, there was another sister that I just, I adored her. I just <laughs> adored her. It was, the relationship was never realized romantically but there was a deep love a deep intimacy between us and then she came from wealth mm -hmm. and it's like she may not have even been a sister or something it was almost like she was living there for a period of time and then when circumstances changed she left and mm -hmm. went back to her family mm -hmm. was she pregnant when she arrived mm. probably mm -hmm. and how did that impact you when she left i was heartbroken mm -hmm because this was my second big loss and I interpreted, I concluded that love never lasts, that if you love something, it will leave, you will be left. It will be, you will be bereft. Okay. All right, Madeline, there we go. We have the reason for your lack of want to do the easy life and the love-based soul choice. Okay, so, Teresa, is there anything else that you wish to impart, some strength or wisdom for Jennifer to embody in this current incarnation once you have gone? I can give her the love of the earth. Mm-hmm. I can give her the delight in the garden, mm -hmm. the wonder of the angels in the sky. Mm -hmm. I can give her the ability to sleep anywhere at any Ooh, time. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you could give her those gifts. And then I'd like you to give her a hug. Mm -hmm. And I would like to call in our angels if you are ready to go. I am ready to go. All right, my darling. Thank you so much. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for showing us your brother and allowing him to cross over. And thank you for the transference and griefs. We wish you well. God bless God's speed and your favorite angel is coming to take you now
something I, Jennifer, am noticing, Mm -hmm. and I realized this a little while ago. When I have past life memories, I remember them as my own. Mm -hmm. There's no intersection. There's no separation between me and who I have been. Mm -hmm. And my experience is that I jump from body to body and have Mm -hmm. had many lives, but that in, in listening to so many people, when they remember a life, it's as if they're seeing a story or they're recalling it as if it is somebody else. I always recall it as if it's my own. And okay. what's interesting is as Teresa or Therese is trying to, she's working to cross over. It's, I'm conscious of her awareness of this. Like I'm experiencing it as if it's me trying to cross over. Okay, so you need to release her, yeah. Teresa, let go. And I think the reason is that there is many versions of you who have not crossed over. I agree. Mm-hmm. And so with your permission, because we've been going two hours, may I just extend the session a little longer? Yes, please. Okay, so we might just take the third session and just turn it into this session now if you don't have anything. That sounds yep. great. Okay. All right. So I'm going to need to call on the big guns here, please. Can I have Archangel Michael and Archangel Zadkiel? I'd like Archangel Raphael, Gabriel, Uriel, Ariel, everyone. And Jezreel. Great. Perfect. I would like the entire energetic team to be with us now because we have a need to create a massive amount of life. I know I have experienced this myself as well, which is why I can identify. I have held back my own soul from crossing over. Mm -hmm. in many lifetimes and what I would like to and I can still see the energy over your face which is a confirmation I would like the angelic assistance because we can't speak to possibly every single portion of Jennifer who hasn't crossed over no there are thousands yeah and this is what's holding you back so we need to get angelic assistance to basically do a rescue where calling in the rescue spirits of light and the entire team to help us cross over all of the incarnations of Jennifer who have not co- not crossed. So we do this without any judgment. We send them huge amounts of light. And uh, Jennifer, the way that I visualized this when I had to do this for myself was it was though I saw the very versions of me represented as like a firecracker or a ball of light that was shot out of a cannon and into Mm -hmm. heavens. So it was for me, there was something that I needed to activate to press a button or light a fire, which then they exploded as crackers into the heavenly realm, or there will be some appropriate, oh, excuse me, um, level of visualization that you can. I'm seeing a dandelion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just a dandelion pod or a dandelion seed pot or his huff. But the seeds are made of pure light. And what I'm doing is there's a a number of, like I have a bouquet of dandelion, dandelions. And so just blowing on. Oh. Some of them are sticky or some of them are like more like attached than others, but I'm seeing a bunch of them that are already just aloft taking just their like little beams of light, just floating above. Mm -hmm. So the angels can impart their healing rays to dissolve the stickiness. Mm Mm-hmm. I can hear my father, who I do believe crossed over, 
who who communicates with me at times and he is Jenny just let it go <laughs> yeah this is no judgment on your behalf Jenny okay this is nobody is going to look at you any less for the fact that your soul didn't cross over in multiple locations it's part of your journey it's part of the soul's journey yeah no there's no guilt there's no it is what it is mm. And if this atheism that we were talking about at the very beginning of this conversation has been, is coming from beyond this lifetime, my soul has not crossed over for fear that there would be nothing but annihilation. Mm -hmm. It is a common reason for not crossing over. Yeah. Plus every soul that ever, every incarnation that ever thought it had sinned. Yes. All kinds of reasons for sticking around. So I'm just also saying these out loud just for those ones of yeah. those that are sticking behind because that may be the reason. There's no the such thing as... Mm -hmm. The fear of forgetting. The fear of being forgotten. The fear of being forgotten, but also the fear of forgetting, the fear of not remembering ah, the wisdom okay. imparted mm -hmm. from other lives wanting to be able to carry the information and the wisdom from this life from a previous life to the next one interesting i just said from this one to the next mm -hmm. so speaking to all of the members of jennifer's soul you can impart all of the wisdom if you imagine it as you are shedding a layer as you leave you can shed a layer and it will energy energetically be imparted directly into jennifer right now mm. and also not many people know but we have the unique ability to connect to the healed version of each incarnation at any time that we desire we've just never been taught that And you'll be able to find, Jennifer, that you can do this with the Akashic Records. I have been functioning like a mosaic. I understand. Yeah. There's no less of me. It's just I'm not fragmented the way mm -hmm. that I was. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and if there are any sticky ones that seem to have a silver thread with a fragmented personality of their incarnation, as soon as they pull in that silver thread, which will have a balloon attached to it, and integrate that back into themselves, they will be able to shoot up to the light. There's just, it appears, there's one life that is Victorian, Dickens, Dickensian, England, prostitute life. Mm-hmm. Does this one wish need to talk before it goes? I think that she might be a victim of somebody like Jack the Ripper. Okay. She's welcome to speak if you're willing to let her speak. Otherwise, she just, nobody was, nobody cared. Nobody mm -hmm. did anything. Mm -hmm. It was, they sold papers with it, but they didn't do anything about it. And that they knew who he was. They yeah. didn't do anything about it. Yeah. You can tell her that I think it's, there are many authors that have postulated who the identity is, and I know that one of them got it right, so it's okay. Her memory has been. 
I think he was royalty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's also, ah, uh, just the indignation. Mm. She, somebody is also explaining to her that um, her indignation and rage does not protect me mm -hmm. in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. It depletes me. Mm -hmm. It is not doing what she's hoping it will do. Mm -hmm. her, her whole reason for holding on to this was to invoke divine retribution and justice. Mm -hmm. But instead, it has simply acted as a weight, as a burden. Yeah. It's been the opposite. Yeah. Every one of these souls stuck around for a noble reason mm -hmm. with the idea that it would act as the antidote when the, when ironically it was the, it did the exact opposite of what was hoped. Yes. Yeah. It's common, and because the one thing that we don't understand as human beings is that karma is actually enacted by the soul itself. It's our own thoughts and limiting belief, which is the karmic wheel. The person who conducted those efforts will have created their own judgment, and that is the only judgment that is ever valid in the eye of the universe, and that's the only judgment that they have to contend with. She just needs to free herself knowing that all will be explained and all will be understood in the celestial realms. She had a sister, mm -hmm. a younger sister, mm -hmm. who was worked in the mills and got disabled, was lame. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And dying was, she couldn't die. She couldn't leave because she was worried about her sister. Okay. So I think she'll find that the angels can show her sister in the light. Yeah, her sister crossed over. Mm -hmm. Her sister was something like, her name was like Maisie. And I think her name was something like Poppy. Mm -hmm. I can, I'm witnessing like at her death, she was, the ancestors came, the angels and ancestors came to get her. Mm. She refused to go. Yeah. The angels have to abide with free will. Yeah. Oh. What I'm, what I'm hearing she needs is that she just needs somebody to validate that she did not deserve to be murdered the way she was, that it was wrong. It will always be wrong. It wasn't fair, mm -hmm. but it is also okay. Mm -hmm. And that staying alive is not punishing the murderer, staying alive or staying in... It's funny, she is the word alive, staying earth bound mm -hmm. only punishes her, not the murderer. Correct. And your higher self should be able to say some words.
I'm hearing that the paradox is that the murderer feeds on the misery of souls, a soul like hers trapped and stuck, or of an incarnation like hers trapped and stuck. And the irony is by sticking around for vengeance purposes, <laughs> it does exactly what the murderer, it's just too ironic. And the best thing that the old saying, the best revenge is living well, perhaps another way of saying it is the best revenge is dying well. Correct. And if that murderer is still stuck in the astral realms, then when that murderer is ready, the angels, oh, I have to be careful what I say because I bring, they come to my door. The angels will assist. Because there is a level of forgiveness that Poppy needs to understand. But she may not be ready to do that yet and she needs to cross irrespective mm -hmm. because she will receive that realisation on the other side. Uh, the higher self, the whole higher soul, the oversoul has that already. Mm -hmm. and is imparting it to her okay and the just the deep sense of forgiveness is the way through there is no there was no there's no end game there was mm -hmm. no losing mm -hmm. it was an unfortunate event mm -hmm. I, Jennifer, am struck by the distinction between the wisdom of the higher soul and the fragments, the ego fragments of lives, incarnations that could not or would not cross over. Who is the person that is vomiting? Who is the person that is vomiting? I see, I can see someone in a bed vomiting up like phlegm and blood and like bile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they are a family member. Okay. From a from another life because it doesn't the way that I usually experience it it, I, it it's too it's like seeing it outside of myself okay, so I'm so imagining that, it's somebody else that, so that was person needs to cross over as well yes because they're making me feel ill huh, I wonder if that could possibly be Charlotte I thought she crossed well. <sighs> no. I'm just doing a my I'm wondering if it is not somebody in this lifetime who died from cancer. The image that I'm seeing is actually, it's like somebody that was associated with Poppy. 
It's somebody mm -hmm. who looked over Poppy's body and vomited when she was found or something like that. I just see like a mm -hmm. top hat mm -hmm. and suit. Mm. Okay. But you need to validate really. Oh, the... Or in a similar circumstance, not in the same same time st stack of time. So more, yes. Ah, the soul experiences opposites. So lean into the fact that it, though it might horrify Poppy, that maybe you experience the opposite. As in being a murderer, being a, murderer. Being a killer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's I'm it, there's just a multitude of like images of sort of the experience of this the revulsion mm -hmm. yep. of finding corpses find a so oh the, sorry go on no you speak the image that I get is it. If you imagine, and it's not this, but it's there's a parallel. If you imagine somebody who is responsible for taking the bodies from Auschwitz and putting them to a mass grave or whatever, I feel like there's some kind of witch equivalent or something. Yes, and also a temple cave-in. Okay. Like a temple cave-in with Vestal Virgins being crushed in the temple that's probably the revulsion yeah there's but it, it feels like it's multiple layers of being a body retriever okay so we can deal with that as one stack and ask for the angelic assistance here because obviously that's they will be stuck together it's pretty strong I can see in the stack, I see an Indian life as a devotee, as a priest or priestess of Kali, mm -hmm. but one who was in the, who was worked in, there was a devotion that was the, the devotion to death, the charnel. Okay. And then also the Egyptian lives of, in the funerary arts. And there's a really interesting intersection between being able to process a body, dig up a body, deal with the mass graves and the bodies in that way, processing an individual body, but also to be able to murder. There's a deep interconnection between all of these. Mm -hmm. Because they all require the dismissal of revulsion in order to be able to do it effectively. Mm -hmm. I also am hearing or being told that every time this murderer, like Poppy absorbed a piece of the murderer's soul, like a piece of him fragmented. Mm -hmm. It's like a horcrux. Yeah, that's understandable yes. completely. And so that's part of why I can see all this revulsion and all of these bodies. Okay. And he probably, by the time Poppy died, he probably did not vomit. <laughs> but when he was first yeah. murdering people, he vomited. Okay, so that's what I'm saying then. Probably I'm saying yes. over the top. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so then we asked the angels, Archangel Raphael, to release these, let's call them Horcruxes, mm -hmm. fragments of the murderer. 
because they need to be reintegrated. Because we wish all souls well. Yes. All are redeemed. All are redeemed? All are redeemed. Okay. So my last question. Jessica Ann. Mm -hmm. Why are you still here? I was assigned to watch and guide and support Jennifer. Okay. But why, Jessica, uh, is your energy still over her face? If all souls have been redeemed, all versions of Jennifer, who did not cross over, have been crossed over. Why is your energy still over her face? All souls that are redeemed was not saying all souls are crossed over. All souls oh, are okay. redeemed. Okay. In in, no matter how heinous the behavior has been, also yep. souls are redeemed. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the clarification. Yeah. It Please has stop. never occurred to me to be other than to be separated ask me another question I may be able to answer Okay, so I'm going to ask Archangel Michael to come in with his Sword of Truth and same with Zadkiel, he's got the Dagger of Truth. They're not actually called that, but that's the way my brain yeah. deals with it. They will cast the truth. And your higher self can also step in because we've got the energy over on the left-hand side. of Up near your book is actually some energy right now. So There's also there's Ethereal's Spear which is another tool of great power. Okay. I'm not familiar with that one. So you can, it's awesome. actually just yeah. right on your book. Yeah. So it's the book. That's where it's got the purple swirling mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. That's where the energy is right now. Mm -hmm. So is there some empathy that you need to bring in some knowledge to deal with this situation? Nothing obvious at this very moment. Okay. We've been um, twins in previous lives. Mm -hmm. While Jennifer has lived many lives as an individual and is separate, she has also lived lives with me where we mm -hmm. have been twins and we were able to do double the work. We were able to do we worked as a team. It has not occurred. It 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 never occurred to me. I'm getting Jennifer is getting a hot flash. You're okay. It it's like it just never even occurred to me to not be here. Okay. So which particular lifetime? as a twin is the root cause. I'm being shown a perfume shop in um, late 1600s, mm -hmm. early 1700s mm -hmm. in Europe. Mm -hmm. Maybe 
I first I thought either France or, or England, but it seems like it could have been either Florence or Vienna. Mm -hmm. And we are siblings, we are a brother and sister team. Mm -hmm. The brother gets the notoriety, mm -hmm. but the sister had the nose. Mm -hmm. In this life, in Jennifer was the sister, I was the brother. Mm -hmm. This life is the one where she gets the notoriety. Okay. We are willing to do whatever works best. Okay. So I want to reassure you, Jessica and all the other names that you've been, that going to the light does not mean that you are separate from Jennifer because separation is an illusion, okay? Mm -hmm. The soul cannot be disconnected from other parts of the soul. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. You are always one. It's just that you have different adventures. And whilst I understand that you enjoy when you have adventures together, it is best for both of you to also experience adventures apart. Because when you have adventures apart, one of you can act as an advisor to the other. Because the one that's in spirit, that is formed and back integrated with the soul has the wisdom of the soul to impart to the one who is incarnated. Do you see that difference? Okay. So, who is going to take you to the light? Most, so here's what I'm hearing. Most of us did not incarnate and has dwelled, has had access to the light, but there were genetic cellular signatures that showed up anyway that allowed us to engage with Jennifer on the physical plane. We were mistaken. Okay. Or misinformed, that's the better way to describe it. We were misinformed. And so it is not being crossed over as much as it is removing the threads or the got the the tendrils, mm -hmm. the piece, yep. our connection to mm -hmm. the cell, to the cellular expression. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah, we, uh, yeah, it's fast. It's, she never incarnate, like it's just, but the cellular expression has allowed her to engage with me in a way that feels like she is here. Mm -hmm. And so she is, I can feel her pulling up mm -hmm. and pulling, like pulling all of the cords that connected mm -hmm. through the cells, just going back up. Mm. 
it feels it's not an angel on this side as much as it's an angel on that side. Perfect. Behind her, allowing her to retrieve all of her, all of the the debris, the, the, the residue mm -hmm. that existed in the cellular expression. Ooh. So as she is releasing from attachment to the embodied, mm -hmm. I am also seeing how the work that I did, I have done in the past with people in honoring their dead, that there have been some souls that have contributed to my exhaustion. Okay. And going back to the pivot year of 2013, mm -hmm. that was a year when five people in my family died mm -hmm. and four people who were either very close to people I was close to or that I was close to myself died. Mm -hmm. It was like, it was just quite a year. Mm -hmm. And I can see how the, I'm really seeing how the deceased who have not crossed over what an energy suck and what a drain mm. they are. Mm. it feels how does my face look is there still the interface or the overlay of jessica as you were just saying whatever you were saying there was a, a definite energy mm -hmm. no there's still something there i'm not sure it's her yeah okay all right, so we, King John Michael, Azrael, and Zadkiel, I really need your assistance now because we have to be aware of the length of this session and the number of souls already crossed over. So you, you need to allow them to use their tools to scan the body and cross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> there will be a banter between Michael and Zadkiel, and I can hear it already. Leave some. No, don't leave some. Zadkiel is always going to be, they all need to go. I am hearing, I believe it's Zadkiel saying, let it burn. <laughs> <laughs> like they are literally telling me to light a candle right now. Okay. Yeah. I can feel a portal over me. Mm -hmm. There's a really large vortex above me. Right. I can feel what is me is really rooted to the ground, is really supported. Like Gaia is holding my feet to the earth, mm -hmm. but I can feel like it's almost like a cyclone or something, and, and yep. more, but like a vacuum where there's just like this amazing amount of energy just siphoning everything up and away. Yeah. As I said, Humans have free will, but there is a point at which the higher self can override mm -hmm. and instruct the angels through the higher self to take any action. Yes. I do this of my own free will. And I, to all of any of these souls, you do you, boo. Like, you go where you will. I'm, I cease to be a landing place. I cease to be a home. my face looking getting there almost oh hmm. i'm really seeing how our cumulative and cultural resistance to grief mm. really creates this inability to let go, inability to cross over, inability to let people cross over, mm -hmm. as yeah. well as the calling people back over and over again. We have a big mess to clean up. Yeah. As a species, we really do. If we could, yeah. okay to grieve. Mm -hmm. 
I'm being guided to inquire about a friend who died, one of the people who died in 2013. His name starts with his initial is K. Mm-hmm. My sense is that he did cross over because it, I've seen enough of what he, my sense is he did cross over. However, it seems like he has um, uh, returned or kind of has, despite being able to be, despite crossing over, has been here a lot. Yeah, so they may have left a fragment. And that's what's hold, pulling them back. So again, that Horcrux idea? Yes. Because they were capable of doing things that are just absolutely remarkable. They could set off, they could turn lights on and off. They could set off alarms. They could move objects. I've seen manifestations of them. And I think their spouse's grief is the root, is what has held them back. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is that we have to concentrate on the fragments that may be part of you. Mm -hmm and assign an angel to go help that spouse in their own time, but we can't interfere. I made an agreement with his soul when he crossed that I would do what I could to be emo- to be available for his spouse and to be of comfort. But the problem was that nothing was of comfort. Okay. I was given a task that was impossible. I agreed to a task that was impossible. So what action should be taken? I need to release any responsibility for this. Okay. Because that's what bound him, he and I, my, my promise to him. Okay. It's an impossible promise. Mm -hmm. All right. So you release that in ways that are best for you. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a circus, not my monkeys. Mm-hmm. Mm, I can really feel how my sense of responsibility and codependency around his spouse's grief has been, was the anchor or the hook for both of us, Mm -hmm. for he and I. I cannot, I am not responsible for whether he chooses to cross over or not fully with, as a result of his spouse's grief. But what I can do is I can relinquish all of my sense of responsibility, Mm -hmm. all of my codependency and all of the part of me that felt like I needed to rescue. Mm -hmm. It was a situation that just sucked, just true. Mm -hmm.
I'm hearing it is released. Okay. So right now I would like to, irrespective of what's left, I'd like to call in Archangel Raphael because immediate healing needs to be done to all the spaces that are vacated from those that have now crossed over. So please accept the green ray. Mm. I accept. So I'm just going to be quiet for a little while and I just mm -hmm. need you to soak in that healing. Mm -hmm. Nicole, we are asking for them to basically return all levels of energy in the body to a state as though there was never any attachment so filling in all holes voids of energy making sure that all residues of emotion thought behavior are removed from this incarnation filling sealing and cleansing Knowing that this healing, sealing, and cleansing will continue as you sleep this evening. Knowing also that I have a series of five meditations that I will be sending you, Jennifer, that you can listen to, which includes a healing, sealing, and cleansing meditation, which should be done daily for the next week. It also contains some audios for you to listen to anytime you get an inkling of remembering a lifetime that you shouldn't be able to remember as though it is your own mm -hmm. and that will remove that will guide you to self remove and cross over that being mm So Jennifer, as you visualize, heal or feel the light healing your body, you can also focus your attention on healing the emotions from the stories. Recall how your wiser self can see things with calm, clarity and wisdom. Feel the energies of acceptance, forgiveness and loving kindness. And I want you to understand that with this sovereignty over your body and your mind and your thoughts, that any old attachments cannot control or affect you in any way anymore. Any side effects of residues of spirit attachments like unhelpful habits, thoughts, ideas or memories cannot control or affect you in any way anymore. Now, when you look back on spirit attachment, you can see it from a high non-dualistic perspective. Perhaps there are no good or bad experiences, just experiences that help us learn and grow a soul. A being that gives us a hard time gives us the opportunity to rise above the challenge, so tough experiences can eventually be a blessing in disguise. You've had the courage to set appropriate boundaries and not be influenced by external entities, including those of yourself, of your soul. You have the confidence and clarity to set your intention to follow your own inner light, and you have now shown at a high level that you can rise above the frequencies of fear, anger, and deception to choose wisdom, forgiveness, and compassion. You've decided to rise above any heavy energies, heavy energies and choose peace. I want you to imagine all the ways this powerful freedom you have attained in this session can benefit you in the future. You can feel amazing about all you've learnt and done. Congratulations. The next few days, I want you to really be conscious of reducing your work and exercise, increasing your sleep and relaxation, going barefoot. Each morning and night do this exercise of healing, sealing and filling your body with light. 
We'd like to thank your spirit guides, your higher self and the archangels for their help and ask that they continue to assist cleaning and healing any old attachments in the coming days and weeks as we continue to resolve spirit attachments. You also have the power now vested by the session to be able to do this for yourself. Now I'll count you up at five, assuming the green ray has finished, and at five you'll be able to come back fully into the moment feeling good. Coming up with one, two, three, four, five, eyes open, feeling good. Wow. Yeah.